Hello, I'm Fire Department Deputy Chief Eric McCoy, and welcome to this edition of Flashback. Our iconic Huntington Beach Pier stands as one of the oldest and longest piers on the West Coast. The city's first pier was built in 1902. The wooden pier extended just 1,000 feet into the Pacific Ocean. In 1910, it was damaged by a severe storm that caused a large portion of it to plunge into the Pacific Ocean. In 1914, the newly constructed pier was rededicated and set a record at that time as the longest and highest concrete pier in the United States. More than 15,000 people attended the pier's rededication ceremony that featured legendary surfer George Freeth providing a surfing demonstration and the beginning of Surf City was born. The pier was damaged and rebuilt a, four, a few more times over the decades, but always rebuilt bigger and better than before. Today, it's a special place to watch surfers, fishermen cast their lines, visitors to stroll along, and has been the place for many wedding proposals, not to mention watching epic sunsets. On this episode of Flashback, we found a historical piece of the pier from 1985, featuring the reopening and dedication of the pier and the pier's legendary restaurant, The End Cafe. In this section of the pier and restaurant were destroyed in the storms of 1983, and this special reopening ceremony features the Ocean View High School marching band, as well as two mariachi bands. In addition, the video features historical information about the pier through the years. From the early 1900s, the pier drew crowds traveling in the old red cars to watch motorcycle races on the beach or to dip in the saltwater pool that was located next to the pier. Today, millions of visitors come to the pier to watch the U.S. Open of surfing as well as professional volleyball and still watching amazing sunsets. We hope you enjoy this episode of Flashback. Before there was a Huntington Beach, the pier was the hub of a waterfront activity. Beginning in 1903, when a wooden structure was extended some 1,000 feet to sea. Residents of the new resort community were joined by visitors from surrounding areas in the novelty of being able to stroll so far into the ocean on a pleasure pier. Visiting the pier became easier on July 4th, 1904, when the first of the red cars of Henry Huntington Pacific Electric Railway rolled into the station of the tiny seaside community now called Huntington Beach in honor of the railroad magnet. With the big red cars running on frequent schedules, visitors came to the pier to participate in a variety of activities, including racing motorcycles on the sand, strolling along the boardwalk, swimming in the surf or at the saltwater plunge, and many came to relax in the sun while listening to the Huntington Beach City Band. But the pier history has not always been one of tranquility. In 1912, a severe storm sent huge surf roaring through the wooden pilings, causing heavy damage as the wooden structure was nearly washed away. Coincidentally, the City Council has been discussing the possibility of building a new pier and place a $70,000 pier construction bond issue proposition on the ballot. Voters approved the idea and a new 1,350 foot concrete replacement pier was built in June 1914. It had the distinction of being the longest, highest and the only solid pleasure pier in the United States. From about 1914 to the 1920s, the pier had normal usage with an occasional large group meeting, spilling over from the nearby area known as Tent City. But with the discovery of oil in 1920, the city's population went from 1,500 to over 7,000 in less than one year. All was hustle and bustle in Huntington Beach as oil derricks sprang up everywhere. Ocean Avenue, now known as Pacific Coast Highway, was built in 1925 and extended to nearby cities. Now visitors came to the pier by the carloads and their automobiles choked the highway and filled the parking area for blocks around the pier and Main Street. All this attention and activity on the pier led to the extension of some 500 feet in the early 1930s to improve fishing and to provide a boat landing. The extension, built of wooden pilings, was four feet lower than the older section and was known to sway a great deal when the surf was up or during storms. The history of the Huntington Beach 
Municipal Pier has been one of the storms which have tested its ability to stand against the ocean, and in the late 1930s, the storm came again, this time with the force of a hurricane, and during a 20-hour period in 1939, the end 250 feet of the pier collapsed. But the people of Huntington Beach repaired their piers again and again as the storms continued to take their toll. In 1930, the Works Progress Administration, known as the WPA, began work on the pavilion building at the head of the pier. It was finished in 1939 and served the community as a hall for concerts, dances, roller skating, and to this day as a restaurant. The structure to the north of the pier, which housed the plunge and other beach-related uses, were also damaged in many storms. But while the pier was constantly rebuilt, these buildings no longer exist. People continue to use the pier as the center of attraction in Huntington Beach. And at its entrance, a fun zone developed in the early 1940s, only to give away as the decade progressed. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the Army took possession of the pier, occupying the structure until June 1945. A machine gun emplacement was in the building at the end of the pier, while the Coast Guard was on the beach with a horse patrol. But the war ended and the pier was returned to pleasure users. The city's population continued to grow, increasing some 1,000% from 1950 through 1960 with the 5,000 or so of the early 1950s soaring to over 110,000 by 1970. Beach and pier activity scored along with the population. 1958 through 1974, the pier was the host of the United States Surfboard Championships with thousands of surf enthusiasts watching the world's best amateurs surfers compete. An exciting attraction was watching those skillful surfers ride their frail boards through the pilings of the pier. Shooting the pier, it is called. Not all the storms around the pier in those days were from the sea. Huge crowds came to Huntington Beach in the summertime, particularly on the 4th of July, to watch the traditional fireworks display after dark. The crush of sometimes unruly beachgoers became too much for the city's small police force and some of the activities surrounding the pier, including the fireworks show and the surfing championships, were ended. Later, a new family crowd, because more common near the pier and new attractions, including professional surfing championships, have made the pier again an important focal point of life in Huntington Beach. Early 1983 was a stormy three-month period as a series of storms with high winds and large waves battered the pier. In the early hour of March 3rd, waves from 15 to 20 feet high broke over the end of the pier, lifting and tearing decking, knocking out pilings, and destroying half of the fame in Cafe. Once the storms cleared, city officials could see that some 30 pilings had washed away. 4,000 square feet of deck was gone, and the end cafe was destroyed. Altogether, nearly $1 million in damage. But even as damaged as was the pier, it withstood the onslaught of wind and waves much better than most piers along the coast from Santa Barbara to San Diego, many of which were nearly destroyed. The future for the Huntington Beach Pier was brighter than for many of the other piers because of a bit of incredible foresight by the city risk management. Our city was the only pier that was insured. So in April 1984, after many studies, the City Council approved the design of a 2,900 square foot building to replace the Inn Cafe. It was to be a two-story building to maximize benefit of the million dollar view. It is to be rented for group use. The first story was again leased to John and Alice Gufferson for his world-famous Inn Cafe. John talks about the new restaurant. Uh, today, we're getting ready for the uh, grand opening and dedication, which will be on September 21st. Uh, we have a brand new building. It's much nicer and much larger. Uh, we have uh, downstairs seating for uh, 60 people. 
and we will be featuring fresh baked goods. We'll be baking all of our own breads and buns and cinnamon rolls out here, so when you walk out on the pier, uh, you'll be uh, engulfed with the aroma of uh, bacon frying and uh, bread baking and cinnamon rolls baking, and it should be a rather pleasant experience for people coming out uh, to enjoy their pier. The Huntington Beach Pier has had a positive effect on the city and the beach in addition to the many fishermen who frequent the pier each day. It has created a wide beach by slowing up the currents along the coast and allowing the sand to settle around the pier. The beach was less than 50 feet wide in 1913 and is some 350 feet wide today. So fishing, strolling, enjoying the atmosphere, watching the contests or just enjoying the surf and the sand have kept the Huntington Beach Pier a place for all people who have a love of the ocean. In a massive civic celebration, about 7,000 people jammed the Huntington Beach Pier to celebrate its reopening and dedication of the end of the Pier Cafe. The end of the pier was closed after the March 1983 storms destroyed the end cafe and the surrounding decking. The end cafe was rebuilt into a two-story, 2,900 square foot facility described as having the million dollar view. While the Goodyear blimp hovered a few hundred feet above the pier, the crowd was being entertained by two mariachi bands. And the Ocean View High School Marching Band. Three.